Hey Bobcat fans, this is Al Weston, Sports Information Director at Georgia College, and it's time once again for the Bobcat Coach's Corner. As we started this a couple of weeks ago, a, a video production to kind of get you a better feel for getting inside the athletic programs at Georgia College, and got such a phenomenal response on YouTube and Facebook as far as the number of views that we decided, like any good business model, that we go ahead and switch things up a little bit. We're going to be here in the beautiful studios over in Atkinson Hall. Going to make it a little bit more uh, uh, razzle-dazzle. Going to put some graphics and, and fancy stuff you know, going on here with the production crew over in Atkinson. And uh, I want to thank them for their efforts And as we get through the Bobcat Coach's Corner. Now, along with those changes, we got one big change, and, and that's going to be my, my uh, pretty face on the camera as well. And I'm sure you're really excited about that. But I can guarantee you there'll be at least two more viewers this week because I'm going to make sure my parents watch it. Now, I know what you're thinking to yourself. Al, let's get on with the sports already. And I agree. Here we go. We're going to get our first coach on the way. And uh, thanks again for tuning in to the Bobcat Coach's Corner. Stick around. for the Bobcat Coach's Corner with head coach Hope Clark. Hope you're getting to be old hat at this now. You're, <laughs> you've got the most seniority as far as the coaches' corners go. Thanks again for, for just giving us an inside look on the soccer program here at Georgia College. No problem. Thanks for having me. Okay. All right. Well, let's look back. It was, a, it was an interesting week for us. We had some high-level competition in here on Sunday okay. and, and lost 3-0 to, to, to Barry University, uh, which, you know, I, I look at that team, they're probably going to be right back in the NCAA tournament again. That's a high-level program there. They had kind of a down year last year, but but they look like they're ready and raring to go. What can you take out of a, out of a game like that as a coach? Um, well, I do think that Barry is actually the best competition that we've played thus far. Um, certainly a, a very strong competitor. I think that whole conference is extremely strong. So, uh, you know, I actually thought we played pretty well. You know, you go back and watch the game film, and I wasn't upset with our play, to be honest with you. I think that uh, Barry was just the better team on the day. Certainly. Yep. So we're just going to keep moving forward. You know, and I, and I talked about it with my staff and, and, you know, some of the friends that have asked me about the game and, you know, and what went down. And it just what I thought was the best note that you could take from it is that even down 3-0, which is considerable in soccer right. terms, you know, uh, there was no give up in no. that team whatsoever. You know, I mean, you, you had your rookies out there. They're still firing away, cranking off shots, you know, right up into the final buzzer trying to, you know, just get something in there. Right. And, and you know, a lot of teams would just pack it in down 3-0 and, and, you know, looking up at, like, you know, having to score a, gore, uh, or score a goal a minute. Yeah. And it, it, you know, but, but your guys didn't. You yeah. Know, they, they did a great job. No, I think, um, you know, the goals, we, we gave up an early set piece in the first half. So we went into the second half with, uh, you know, a lot of pride. Most importantly, I preach HEP. And that's heart, effort, and pride. And I think if we can go out there every day uh, with those three things, we're going to be successful, irregardless of what we do. Um, you know, so we get in, we give up an early kind of unfortunate uh, goal in the second half, and still I saw a lot of fire in the team. So I was proud of them for that, which is a, a big change from what we were doing early in the season. The girls are uh, certainly working hard and very motivated. Even when we went down 2-0, they still had that fire in them. Okay. Well, let's look at last night. Yeah. Great night. We had the Think Pink night. Got your first Peach Belt Conference victory of the season. You're undefeated in the Peach Belt Conference, Hope. You're on <laughs> top of the standings right now. Uh, how, how did that feel just to get the conference season going in front of a nice home crowd? Right. You know, um, I've played a lot of, you know, programs in the Peach Belt Conference, but the, certainly last night it was uh, – I just kind of sat back a little bit more last night and see what the girls bring. I mean, it's conference time. It's go time. And, uh, you know, I, I haven't been around this team during conference, so I wanted to see what they bring to the table, and um, they certainly came out fired up. I mean, we, we – we were putting some pressure on George Southwestern, and um, you know, just good to great. You know, it's great to get a good win on the you know opening match of Peach Belt Conference. So we'll see if we can be consistent. Yeah, a, a big like forty shot disparity, I think, between the two teams. You talk about pressure. You really applied it the entire game. Just didn't find the net in the first half, but cranked three in in the second. Uh, you know, was there was there something different in the second half, or was it just uh, you know? Uh, ricocheting off of a defender's head for the first one, I know, yeah. but but the rest of them was it was it just uh, you know finding better spots to put the ball? Yeah, you know I think um, 
it, it was just tough. We were going to get our opportunities, and that's why I wasn't really stressed going into the second half. I mean, we put ourselves into a situation where we allowed uh, Georgia Southwestern to hang on in that game and really feel like they were a part of that game, and we did that for them. Um, so, you know, I, I was a little fired up at halftime and, um, you know, asked the girls to do their job. And their job is to put the ball in the back of the net. I put a little pressure on our front line and midfield. And uh, it, as you can tell, they really stepped up. And, you know, team's working. The defense was going to keep that shutout. But, you know, midfield and front line need to put something in the back of the net. And, you know, it was going to come, though. Okay. Once it came, it came. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and you've got uh, a lot of rookies up front, of course. We've talked about that a bunch of times already. Cater, Katie Taylor poking in four goals already this season. Uh, and, and Brittany Bohr is an offensive catalyst for you, too, as well as Taylor Yee, three freshmen, you know, making things happen on that front line for you. But goals in soccer are typically, you know, who, who scores the goals, not necessarily is who created that goal in a lot of cases. Um, who are some of the unsung heroes as far as the, the offensive attack for, for Georgia College? Okay. Um, I really think that, you know, the team is what's making us successful right now. And, and you say unsung heroes, you know, uh, Anna uh, Where's Becky and Karen Bonilla, uh, Taylor Yee, uh, Alex Knight. We've got a lot of just great players that are all contributing. And last night our backs were doing a great job getting into the attack. So Jamie Colcord was creating quite a bit on that left back for us. Olivia Holden getting into the attack as well. Jessica Binkowski. I mean, everyone was going forward last night. So, uh, you know, all in all, I think, you know, the team is what's making us successful. And those are some of the players that are setting things up for Katie Taylor. Okay. Well, you mentioned some defensive players in, in that there. Uh, your three wins, your three and three this year. And all three of those wins have been, been shutouts. Um, so this has been a program that's been defensive minded in the past. You got an all American goalkeeper, multiple all conference defensive right. players, but I haven't had the, the front end of things. Can you give me a little bit of just, you know, what does it say about our defensive play and the wins that, you know, they've all come by shutout? Yeah. You know, I think, uh, collectively we've, we do have a very good back line. We've got some new players in some positions, uh, you know, Allie Treat holding down the defensive midfield position. She's just exceptional in the air and she's composed on the ball, so she really keeps a good balance for us in there. Um, the girls have just been really taking in the new style, and I think, um, you know, we're either winning large and keeping the shutout, or we're losing large, and that's the thing, you know, I'm a I'm a very attacking-minded coach, so if we're going to lose, I'm going to go down swinging, and that's the thing. I like to push for some goals at the end, so sometimes, you know, we're getting those 3-0 losses when the game maybe was a 1 or a 2-0 game. Um, so I think defensively, you know, we're doing a good job, but when we allow the counter, that's when we're getting beat. Sure, sure. Okay. Well, and this is coming from a former goalkeeper yourself at, at Virginia Tech, so you know a little bit about what, what it takes to get a, a ball past a goalkeeper. So hopefully we'll see some more exciting soccer out there at Bobcat Field. And, again, talking about Bobcat Field, it's going to be packed for the rest of this month. We're, we're all home games uh, until the end of September, and, and we've got two more coming up this week, uh, West Georgia on Saturday. What do you know about the Wolves? What are they going to be bringing in at 5 p.m. on Saturday? Well, I think, you know, they're 2-5 and five right now, but uh, those losses have been – against some pretty tough competition, to be honest with you. So, uh, and, and they're not uh, blowout games for them. So I expect them to be pretty strong. I've coached uh, quite a few of their players in the past, so I'm pretty sure they're going to come here and try to prove a point uh, playing for a former coach. So I expect a pretty strong game. Um, I think they're going to come out to battle, and they want to get a win on the season for them. Okay, and in West Georgia, of course, coming uh, in here after losing to us last year, a 3-2 to two game in overtime uh, at their place, you know, so I'm sure they're going to have a, a little bit of extra to, to want to get that W right. back. Okay, the, the next game is going to be Wednesday, uh, and it will get back into the Peach Belt Conference contest. Going to be taking on Lander University, and uh, in our past with Lander, there's been some pretty heated contests, some pretty physical contests with the Bearcats from South Carolina. What do you know about their team this year? What are they going to be bringing to Milledgeville? Um, you know, I'll be honest with you. I only think about one game ahead, so I'm going to focus <laughs> right. on West Georgia right now. I don't know much about Lander. I, uh, I hear it's been physical, um, but most importantly, let's make sure our girls play with some class. And, uh, you know, we need to get a little bit more physical ourselves, uh, certainly not in a negative way. But uh, let's go ahead and focus on West Georgia right now and take care of Lander next week. I completely understand. Just the next time we'll be talking will be after that Lander game. You can, you can tell me all about it then. Well, th uh, thanks again for, for coming in here for the, uh, the Coach's Corner on the new setup. Uh, and I'm sure we're going to look slick with all sorts of uh, you know, fun graphics and things okay. at the bottom. But uh, thanks again for giving us an inside look here, Hope, and, and, and good luck this, uh, this week and, and through into next week. Thanks so much for everything. Appreciate it.